Hello guys and welcome to Switch Replay. Today I'm joined by Michael. Hello. And Tom. Hello. And today we have quite a special kind of uh, set of videos for you. We're going to preview the Premier League, but to make it a bit different, we're going to do, in each episode, we're going to preview two other teams. So to make it easier for us, really, we're going to do in alphabetical order. So we're going to do AFC Bournemouth first, Arsenal and etc. etc. So in the first video or this episode we're going to talk about Bournemouth and Arsenal. So let's start off with Bournemouth and I think the best way to go about it is to introduce us new signings of this season. Tyron Mings from my Arsenal, um, from, not from Arsenal, from Ipswich. Uh, Christian Atsu from <coughs> Chelsea. Arthur Burke from Southampton and Federici from Reading. Joshua King from Blackburn and Sylvan Distan from Everton. Um, yeah, so uh, I think the main talking point uh, people picked out was Tyrone Mings. Uh, very expensive for the player that he was. He's not proven in the Premier League at all, and you know he's, he hasn't. He didn't really have uh, long at the Championship. You know he's a good player, but I'm not really sure he's worth that kind of value uh, in the mm. amount of money that. Ipswich got for him in the end. Yeah, yeah, I think that's like a great example of how uh, uh, like teams are starting to play a lot, pay a lot more for players now. And you've got a question like in the modern day market, he might be worth that. Like maybe two years ago, he wouldn't have been. But the way that the way prices are rising at the moment, especially for English players, it probably about a fair price. But I think the, the key um, aspect of Bournemouth season. Uh, in the Premier League, will be will be the manager Eddie Howe. He's been tremendous for them all. All the way he's been from League Two, got them promoted to League One, and they they could have gone out of the Football League when he took charge. He was only 30, 32 and he kept them up, and then they just built a very solid base, and then they've just moved up the the leagues slowly. It didn't really work with um, Howe at Burnley. And then he went back to Bournemouth again, and then they've got promoted now to a Premier League. It's a massive achievement because they are a small club. I think people will um, will accept that. But he will be he'll, his tactics and his tactical plays will be um, interesting to see if they stick to his um, attacking philosophy like they did in the Championship. But obviously, teams like um, Swansea they've they've kept with that. So I don't see why. Um, Bournemouth should go in their shell and, uh, but the key player will be Matt Ritchie with 15 goals and 17 assists last season he was outstanding for them and he was always going to he should have probably won championship player of the season Bamford was a bit lucky but it'll be interesting to see how he steps up too yeah I think you know he's one of those players that should be able to step in I think you know the way he played last season he I think he should be able to you know, bring those performances into the Premier League, and I think the, I think as long as they do keep that attacking, like obviously we saw Leicester, you know, they're really good uh, on the attack, uh, set like at the end of last season, and that's ultimately what kept them up. You know, so I think it, so long as they do keep attacking, and you know, players like Richie and Wilson keep up the form that they had in the Championship, I think you know they definitely have got a chance of uh, staying in the Premier League. Yeah, well, but they are they are underdogs there. So. I would compare them to like a Blackpool, I would say. It is going to take, I wouldn't say a miracle, it's going to take a lot of hard work, but the some signings they've made, it's, it's a lot of experience and a bit of inexperience too. I'm glad that Howe's not gone for too many foreign players that might not be able to put the work ethic in. And it's good that Howe's also going to trust the players that got them promoted from the Championship. And eventually, when we come on to Watford, we'll probably talk about similar why yeah. they might not have, may might not do well. But it's good to see how trust in the players, and they should, because they got AFC Bournemouth to the Premier League, the first team, first squad to do that in the club's history. So they deserve that chance in the Premier League. Clearly, um, I think with them being like such a small, like sort of club with a quite small stadium, quite small fan base, they'll have to establish themselves quite well because it could go like one or two ways. It could um, go very well like Swansea did because they were always 
sort of in between the Championship, League One, League Two, and they've managed to establish themselves as like a really good Premier League club. But um, you could also look at like Blackpool, like you said earlier about now they've found themselves in loads of debt and in League One, so they'll have to play it right because when you don't have that big of a fan base and not as much money as other teams coming in, you got to like I don't know, you've got to establish yourself and play it right. Yeah, but I, I think they do have a Russian ownership, and they are ready to splash a cash in the championship. So yeah. if things do go well or don't go well, I'm sure in January, then uh, Eddie Howe, if he's still a manager, uh, he would be able to get enough funds to to get players in. Yeah, I'd hope uh, if they weren't doing so well, you know, I, I hope they keep their faith in Eddie Howe because I think you know he did so well um, last season in the championship, and he's you know. He's been quickly loved by the all the fans and that, so I think um no, I think Eddie Howe's gonna be a a really big factor. But uh should we move on to what we think the league position is, what league uh position they'll get at the end of the season? Certainly, certainly. Yeah. You go first, Tom. I don't know, I can <laughs> yeah, I mean it can either go one two is they're either gonna get completely they're not gonna be able to do with it. I, I think they might avoid it. I so think the I'll way you go put them. So if you, I'm going to go. Like I'm going to go sixteenth. Sixteenth, right, Michael. I think you. Yeah. Oh, I don't oh. know. I just can't see their football like working out for them as well as it has in the other leagues. And I don't know. But I don't know. Um, no, I'm going to say seventeenth. Oh fuck sake. Where do you I've think? I've got seventeen down. I've got seventeen down. I just wrote it down. So. so we all think they're gonna narrowly avoid relegation. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah, they've got enough firepower. Yeah. To um. Sh- should we put them in seventeenth? Yeah, seventeenth seems like. Yeah, a, I think. Yeah, oh, what about what about Colm, who is still on holiday, by the way? He will uh, be coming back soon. Yeah, hey, Colm, Colm thinks. Oh God, he's got twenty. Yeah, yeah. Colm. Um, Colm sent us a, a table of his. Kind of predictions while he's on holiday, um, but he's he put Bournemouth in twentieth place. But I think, you know, I don't know. I can't, I can't. I think with the attack they've got, I can't really see them. You know, just going bottom at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, I think seventeenth is a fair spot for them. So they're the first team that get added to our uh, predicted Premier League table. So yeah, yeah. and that's. Finishes our roundup for Bournemouth. Hope, hope we've covered all bases. And now we move on to the Gunners, Arsenal. Uh, this will be interesting. Um, they've only made one signing, but it's been one of the best signings of the summer, I'd say. Better check from Arsenal, uh, from Chelsea. Yeah. To Arsenal. Well, I mean, I think they were lacking, you know, uh, a world-class keeper in Chesney. You know, I think he's he's a good keeper, but. I don't think he's at the quality that Arsenal need if they're going to be serious about mounting the title and, challenge this season. Yeah. And same with Espina. I think Gary Neville yeah. did a wonderful piece on uh, Monday Night Football about, uh, I think it was against Swansea and they lost 1-0 and he was behind his line and he couldn't, or he was too um, he was too forward on his line and then he couldn't get round to the, make him a save. He couldn't pour it out. And it was terrific analysing. Like Gary Neville is, he's great pundit, one of the best. Anyway, um, yeah, pay a check. He will guarantee extra 10, 10 to 15 points. I think John Terry took that into interview um, quite early on in the season. So yeah. if John Terry's saying that, then it must be true. Yeah, well, um, I mean, we've seen Pedicek <clears throat> do so well for Chelsea in the past. And I thought, I thought it was a shame that, you know, Courtois just came in into that position. But obviously Courtois takes, the, takes oh, that first team spot because yeah. of his age. And, you know, he's obviously, you know, already... Oh, he's one already, of the best keepers in the world, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. So... But I think it's a shame that Czech didn't get the playing time last season. So I think it's a good, uh, it's a good signing for Arsenal and for Petr Czech because he knows he's going to be in the first team, especially after Shez and he got loaned out um, to Roma. Uh, so I think yeah, it's a really good signing. It's really going to help him in the following season. Uh, it seems like maybe Wenger's done with his business or with his summer business already. Doesn't seem. Uh, like he might bring another two, one or two players. So it might be just one sign, but their squad is very strong, even with just for the one signing. 
Um, but you never know. If, if a player is available, uh, then I'm sure Arsene Wenger will uh, will buy him, maybe a striker, or maybe another defensive mid just for backup for Coquelin. Yeah. So I think, um, I think their midfield isn't isn't very balanced. They've got like a lot of similar players, like Özil, Wilshire, and Cazorla are all like very similar. Like they're all playmakers. They need like a uh, I don't know, they need yeah. like a physical presence. They're all like very technical, but they're all like quite small, weak. No like there's no real like I don't know, you know, somebody like maybe one Yama, somebody like that. They just need like a that type of field to sort of um so they don't get like as many counter attacks against them and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's kind of testament to kind of uh, the way Arsene Wenger plays his football. He likes to play like a nice tactical good passing doesn't he so I think yeah. for him that's the kind of players he wants in the team but I think it does also mean he doesn't get the best out of players like Wilshere because Wilshere ends up playing too far back you know we've seen for England when Wilshere plays a more attacking role he does really well but obviously you know players like Ozil take that you know before he can you know get, get played in that attacking position and Kazola uh, can't so I think uh, and Wilshere can't so it kind of means that he doesn't get the best out of all his kind of attacking style players. Uh, but, yeah, I agree in the sense that they need a, you know, a defensive mid and more physical presence, like you said. I'm just touching on that point of the, the midfield. I think, obviously, um, Arsenal's st- strength and depth is, is, is very good, probably one of the best in the in the country, maybe the, the world game. Um, and then Ramsey's another great player. Ozil, he was terrific. He's been terrific in pre-season, and um, you still got Sanchez to come back from uh, Copa America. Uh, also, Chamberlain's fit now. It's, it's it's a lot of squad in depth, and it'll be interesting to see how um, Wenger plays it for the first first few games and see how he how he starts his eleven. But I think I think one of the key players is is obviously going to be. Um, Let's just Sanchez. He was absolutely incredible last season. Toured up every um, fullback in the league, probably. Uh, Twenty-five goals from for a, from a winger position is is terrific. Do you think? Obviously, most people are saying they need that striker player because you know Giroud. You know he he's good on a good day. You know he's, he can be fantastic in the Premier League, but I think they need someone who's you know. Once again, like that goalkeeper, I think they need someone who's world class in that kind of thing. But you know, I think Walcott can thrive in that kind of position. Um, but it's just you know it depends whether he can stay fit all season long. And but I'm not sure if they're gonna bring in someone else or not. Well, Jury's gonna score you 15 to 20 goals. Which is not bad, but and with the addition, if you think of Arsenal's midfield, they chip in a lot of goals. Oh yeah, not definitely. Unlike, um, I wouldn't say Chelsea because obviously Hazard, Oscar, Julian, they've they, but some teams do struggle with their midfielder players getting goals, so then they they want a world class uh, striker. Yeah, I can see what you mean, but um. I don't know. I feel like having a defen you know, that defensive physical presence and, you know, a world class striker, I think they they guaranteed win the league, you know. Mm. But I think that's because I think there were the odd games, you know, last season where you kind of felt uh, first half of the season especially, um, where they were kind of they were playing this great football, great passing football, but they weren't finishing their chances. And you know, even with players like Sanchez and uh, you know chipping in um, with their goals, I don't know. I kind of feel like they do still need someone, you know, just every single day, you know, every every weekend to to make sure that they're finishing their chances. Because I think that was possibly why Arsenal couldn't put, uh, you know, you know, bring it down to, you know. Well, maybe get first place in the Premier League because they didn't have that player at the start of the season to to do what they needed to get the points. Mm, yeah, they, yeah, they did struggle at the start. I think Giroud's broken leg didn't help. Um, he's missing that for four months. Yeah, uh, with Andrew, but 
I think Arsenal are always going to be up there, but let's go on to our predictions for where do you think Arsenal will come next season. Tom, we'll start with you again. Um, I'm going to stick my neck out and say I think Arsenal could... I mean, I still fancy Chelsea, but I think depending on what happens, I think Arsenal could fight for that first position. So you're saying second, right? Uh... I think, yeah, I think second is the most likely. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, Tom? I mean, Michael? Um, <laughs> I've got them in third because, uh-huh. um, purely because I think, I don't know, I think Man United and Chelsea have just got that squad level mm-hmm. that's just like a step up yeah. from theirs. Like, I don't know, I think with Man United um, signing Depay, Snyderlin, Schweinsteiger, like they, they just their squad is now a lot better than what Arsenal's is, and obviously Chelsea. They've got the best squad in the league. They're like head and shoulders above the rest of the division at the moment. And I just can't see Arsenal competing with them two teams, especially without a world class striker. Yeah. <clears throat> and obviously, Man United and Chelsea have they've got Rooney, they've got uh, Diego Costa, so and Arsenal. They just don't have anyone that can compete, I don't think. Yeah, it's like you've been looking at my predictions, Michael, somehow, or we're thinking <laughs> about the same vibes. Because I've literally put, I put down before you recorded, I put Arsenal down as third. Yeah. So I'm going for third. What did, what did um, Colm put? Uh, Colm? Colm did put second. Uh, oh, he, put, he put them behind... Uh, Behind Chelsea and ahead of United, um, so I don't know. I can see your Sorry. points of that and being third. The, the reason I put them ahead of United was just because, uh, and we'll get on to United a bit later on. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't know. I, f- I just feel like the Arsenal have just kept their squad intact and improved it in that keeper position, and I think they're going to improve it, you know, once more. Um, as well, so I don't know. I just feel like they've got a team that have found a kind of way to play and do their best in. So what what are we gonna decide on ultimately? I don't know because I think the one thing Man United do have on Arsenal is the capability to beat like the big teams. Like they just they can win them big matches, which Arsenal struggle to do sometimes. Yeah, that's just why I think they'll come ahead of them. All right. Well, I'm happy putting there. Uh, Putting Arsenal in that third position, so should, we'll put them in in okay. third. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me. All right. Okay, just a little feature at the end of um, this episode, or every episode of the preview, we're going to talk. We're going to say we're going to mention two players for each team who you could put in your fancy football team. We also we we encourage you you guys to join our Fancy Football League. Uh, the code will be in the description. Or Tom, do you have it on you right now? Uh, no. That's <laughs> awesome. Well. I'll put it, we'll put it up on the screen. Yeah. All right, we will, hopefully, uh, if our graphics guide does well. Um, oh, so hell. let's start with Bournemouth. For Bournemouth, you guys should be putting in Callum Wilson and Matt Ritchie into your fancy football teams. As Matt Ritchie, as we said earlier on the episode, 15 goals, 17 assists. Absolute bargain. And now for Arsenal, we think that you should be got you should be putting these two players in your fancy football team. Alexis Sanchez, 25 goals last season in all comps. And Pesek Cech, he will be keeping a lot of clean sheets. The uh, Premier League record ke- ke- uh, clean sheet keeper. I think that's how you say it. Might go wrong, um, but he is he is a record of that. And Arsenal's defence is pretty rock solid at the moment. So those two players, you should be putting in the, putting them in to your fancy football team. And this concludes the first part of the Barclays Premier League preview. We will be uh, uploading two episodes per day. 
<laughs> no, no, one episode per day. So just to keep the videos nice swimmingly across the channel. So I hope you guys have liked this first preview part of the Barclays Premier League. Be sure to keep listening for part two, part three, and etc. So bye from Michael. Bye. Bye from Tom. Goodbye. So bye from me. <laughs> <laughs>